Hi everyone, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. And today I wanted to do a slightly different type of video. So what I want to do is to read all six books that are shortlisted for International Men's Booker Prize 2020. Read them, share with you my opinions and ideas about the books and try and predict the winner of this whole competition. Officially the winner of the International Men's Booker Prize 2020 will be announced on the 19th of May. I think it would be interesting to see if I agree with the decision of the committee because on the 19th we will check the decision together and we will see if my personal preferences coincide <laughs> with the committee's decision. I thought it would be fun. Now let me introduce you the books. So I have already had two books before and the rest of them except for one. One book still has arrived. I hope it will arrive by the like 19th so I will be able to read it. But for now I have like five books. We will open the parcel together. Here they are and two that I had. One of them is not for this price. Okay. Oh, they look so beautiful. So the first book that I wanted to introduce to is The Enlightenment of the Green Gage Tree by an Iranian author. Unfortunately, I don't know how to pronounce the author's name, but it's right here. So the book is set in the decade after the Iranian revolution, which took place in 1979. Yes, 1979. The book is told by a ghost of a 13-year-old girl whose family had to flee Tehran after the revolution and they decided to go to a small village in hopes to preserve all their like intellectual um, property. A book about experiences of revolution and family experiences and just trying to stay free. Sounds very interesting. So this is the first book that I'm going to read. Next book is by a German author and this is Till by Daniel Kellman. And this book is based on German folklore, which is already brilliant. Like, I love books based, based on folklore and mythology and stuff like that. And we follow a character who is like a trickster. From his childhood, he has been practicing walking on ropes. And now that he is adult, he travels around Germany with performances. But people think that this person, his name is Teal, he brings bad luck to the places where he arrives. That's so far what I know about the book and what I know about the character. Also, it sounds brilliant, so we will see. We will read it together. Next book is by a Hispanic author. I'm not sure which country she's from. Gabriela Cabenzon Camara. And so this is The Adventures of China Iron. To be honest, I have no idea what this book is about. Yeah, at this point I have no idea, so I will figure it out together when I read it. <laughs> Next book is by a Dutch author, and the book is The Comfort of Evening. Again, I have no idea what it's about. I just bought it because it's shortlisted and because I wanted to read all the books shortlisted for the price. So again, we will figure it out later when I read it. And the last book that I have on my hand at the moment is this. And look, it is so beautiful. So beautiful. This is the Memory Palace. Memory Palace by Yoko Ogawa by a Japanese author, which is perfect because I like reading Japanese literature. And again, I have no idea what the book is about, so we will figure it out together <laughs> when I go, as I go. So let's see what it says on, on the blur. Head ribbon bird rose. To the people on the island, a disappeared thing no longer has any meaning. It can be burned in the garden, thrown in the river, or handed over to Memory Palace. Soon enough, the island forgets it ever existed. When a young novelist discovers that her editor is in danger of being taken away by memory police, she desperately wants to save him. For some reason, he doesn't forget, and it's becoming increasingly difficult for him to hide his memories. Who knows what will vanish next? The memory police is a beautiful, haunting, and provocative dystopia about the power of memory and the drama of loss from one of Japan's greatest writers. And the last book that I still don't have on my hands, but is also shortlisted for International Men's Booker Prize 2020, is Hurricane Season. I will put the picture here. Hurricane Season, season by Fernanda Melkar. And this is supposed to be like a horror story based on Mexican mythology or Mexican folklore. This, this is what I know about the book so far. And again, 
sounds so interesting and it's also like scary and haunting and eerie this is the genre of literature that i want to a little bit get to i'm not really good at horror like reading and watching horror movies but it's interesting so this is another book that i also want to read and i hope it arrives before the 19th but now let's start reading the books because i'm so excited i think i will start probably with i think the memory police i will start with the memory police and then we will come continue with some other books i'm still thinking memory police or the iranian book i, I have pretty good feelings about this book also but i'm going to like it besides i update you later <laughs> everyone so i have finished my first book for this challenge and oh my god i loved it so 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 much it was totally worth the read and it was so beautiful i can totally see why this book is shortlisted for international men's booker prize 2020 this year so heartbreaking but it is so beautiful at the same time i'm just so surprised it was the writing brilliant i think the number one thing that i really really enjoyed about this book is the world that Shuku Fezer has created. She has created such a rich, magical world with genes and people, and living people, dead people, mythical creatures, ghosts. It was so brilliant and all of them interacting, all of them living together. It just felt so, so, so magical and poetical and lyrical and I loved it so much. And basically this is a story about people trying to escape the sorrowful reality of their lives and trying to preserve their lives and their freedom. The events of this book are happening after the Iranian revolution of 1979, so like in the next like 10 years, but the narration is not linear, so if you want to read this book, like be aware of that. For me personally, I really also enjoyed that part of the narration that like for example now we are in this moment of time and then suddenly we jump to the to another story in the past but somehow related to the present or we jump into the future also somehow related to the present it was all very logical it was all connected so it didn't bother me and I really enjoyed the aspect of this like narration in different periods of time but if you don't like this just be aware of that and so like i said the story is set in iran in the years after the revolution and we follow a family that are that decide to flee tehran to a very small remote god forgotten village in the north of iran and they hope that the new regime the new islamic regime of the country will not find them there and they will be able to stay free and basically just read books that they want to read because this is like a very edu educated family they are very cultural books are a very big part of their lives and the new regime being very oppressive and like deciding what people should read what people shouldn't read so they basically just burn all the classics this family has a very big library collection and they love their books and they don't they want to continue reading them and so plus the mother of the family she doesn't want to wear the head headscarf she's like i will never wear that thing i want to do i want to wear whatever i want i want to stay free and so just to stay free they run they, they flee the tehran but the things don't go quite according to their plan and of course the new regime also find them there however this book is more than just a story of like revolution and a new oppressing regime it's a story about family it's a story about new life and changing society and people learning to live in this society it also dives in such topics of human mentality and human resilience crowd mentality and family it also has some element of mental illness but i would say that mental illness in this book is described very poetically like it's described in a metaphor it doesn't really like tells you that the person has gone mad it creates this like metaphorical image 
which is very much like Kafka <laughs> the way like I saw it you know when you read the Ka Kafka's book you're like oh my god what's happening like I don't understand what's going on in this book this is the same uh, the way I saw it it was just a metaphor this book just has so much in it and it's so difficult to describe but it's just so brilliant I love it so much this book also deals with grief and I loved also the portrayal of grief here it was so touching and again poetical and beautiful I love this book a lot I gave it five out of five stars I'm sure I will reread it again and again even though it breaks my heart like the events in this book and like what happens to this family what they have to go through it is so heartbreaking it is very sad it's just so unfair like the treatment that they receive so unfair and again it just ruins you <laughs> but it I don't know I just I love this book so much it was so good so highly recommend it this book is brilliant so now I'm going to jump into the adventures of China Iron by Gabriel Calvinzon Camara and this is an Argentinian story by an Argentinian author I'm going to start reading it and I will update you when I finish it Hi everyone so let me update you on my reading I have finished reading the adventures of China Iron by Gabriela Capenzon Camara so this book to be honest it wasn't my favorite so I feel like I wanted more out of it it was it has such an interesting premise and it had such an interesting idea and this book was just too short for me I wanted more so basically everything starts with this girl she's very young i think she's like a teenager in this book she's running away from her husband her husband was enlisted in the army that's, that's why he left home from the very beginning she didn't like she didn't want to marry him she hates her husband he just won her in a bed with her previous kind of guardians but she was kind of just working actually for them she was like their slave and he just won her and unwillingly in the age of like 12 she became his wife by the age of, of 14 she bore him two children she hated him always and now that he was enlisted and he left house she left her two children with an elderly couple and she just runs away from her house on her journey she meets this english lady who came to argentina to find her fortune and she's like she and her husband they bought a land in argentina brings all of her like animals her cows she brings them with her from england and now she's traveling to that land that she and her husband bought and her husband actually came before her and now he's also kind of lost and she's also at the same time looking for her husband and so this argentinian girl she like meets this english lady and they start traveling together and this like english lady kind of opens up the girl's eyes on the world she tells her about all the different continents she tells her about all the different like scientific and ideas for example like gravity and like the the fact that the earth is ra like round and it's just this girl kind of learning about the world it was interesting and then at the same time it's also like a story about like kind of love relationship between these two so they are also like sexually interested in each other so they have like this aspect to their relationship as well so it was also interesting the end was very interesting i will not tell you what happens in the end in the end but actually it was very interesting and i wanted more i wanted to know more about their life style like how it becomes so this book was just basically too short for me <laughs> i wanted more i wanted more out of it there is so much description of like argentinian like nature and species of different animals and like the plants and everything so it was interesting but like there are so many different like words i read like the translator's note and translator said that this was like a challenge for him to translate all the names of like all the plants and animals but there's really, really like a lot of those things in this book so the descriptions of like argentinian nature were really interesting for me as well this i gave it four stars out of five i just wanted more i wanted more from this <laughs> this is a, a retelling of actual classical work of argentinian literature 
as also foundation like gaucho epic martin fierro and this is a celebration of the color and movement of the living world the open road love and sex and the dream of lasting freedom this is like a perfect summary of this book <laughs> like what this book is about traveling freedom love sex and stuff like that so everything is in here and yes I just wanted more but to be honest i am really interested in reading martin fierro now this is like a feminist retelling so this is i guess a retelling from a perspective of a woman i guess like the original work is probably is from the perspective of a man because fierro is her husband the one he's like a poet and so this is the guy she runs away from so I guess the original work is from his perspective. That's interesting. I would like to read that. If I can find that book, I will definitely read it. This was still very good, but for me just not enough. Now I'm off to reading The Discomfort of Evenings. This is a Dutch work by a Dutch author. Something about family and like dealing with loss in the family, something like that. I will read it and then I will update you later. Hi everyone, so I have finished this book, The Discomforts of the Evening. I am so confused by it. <laughs> I honestly don't really know how I feel about it. I definitely did not like it. I definitely did not enjoy reading this book. But at the same time, I have this feeling that it wasn't the point. Like, you are not supposed to like it. It's more like you're supposed to dislike it. <laughs> the topic itself is hard, so it's very depressing. The topic is grief. Grief after losing like a very close person to you. And so and so if, like that's why it's like very it's very dawning, it's very depressing reading this book. In the middle of it, I was like, I just wanted to finish. <laughs> I just wanted to stop. <laughs> But at the same time, since this is the premier object of the book, to portray the grief, which is obviously is a terrible feeling and the situation is terrible. And since this book made me feel, not feel like grief, but just, it just made me feel things, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. It made me feel terrible things. In this sense, I guess it did a really good job. But at the same time, it was just so depressing and hopeless and loveless. And all the characters in this book are so selfish. Basically, we follow just a family, family of two parents and three children. There were four children, but like one son passed away. And so they're grieving this son. And so everyone is this family, especially parents, so selfish like they only think about themselves how much they have lost how it is hard for them and they completely forget their children even though their children obviously are also suffering they also have lost a brother and so this is just a, like a story of family growing apart and children trying to cope with this by themselves in like a very unhealthy gross ways especially like one child one brother he becomes very sadistic he becomes so violent with first with animals and later with people already and it was just so terrible to read it was so terrible to read girls like what's going on with girls is also so gross so hard i, I was so happy when i finally turned the last page and i was just like oh finally but at the same time, I feel that it kind of did a good job at what it was trying to do. It was obviously honest, like very honest, portraying grief in a very unhealthy and lonely environment. And I guess like it was true to what it was trying to do. So, but I did not like it, <laughs> but again, not supposed to like it so i honestly don't know how i feel about it i didn't rate it on goodreads because i honestly have no idea how to rate this book i probably will never reread it i will never ever come back to it 
and I think I would not maybe recommend it to people because again it's very heavy if you are in a good mood it will just put you in a very bad mood and if you are depressed and if you are struggling it will just make you feel worse <laughs> at least like the way i see it so i would not recommend this book to be honest and it was just so gross so gross there are just so many gross moments of like girl eating her own what is the word snot about a girl picking a snot from her nose and eating it all the time like throughout the whole book she's oh, fu, fu. and then just like again I, i've talked about it in, in my previous vlog children torturing animals torturing children it's just oh ooh, so terrible there are so many disgusting things in this book so i don't know I'm so happy that it's finished. I'm so glad that it, I've finished this and I don't have to read it anymore. <laughs> so this is my feelings about it. Now I'm off to reading The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. Wish me luck. I hope I'm going to like it. I've already started like a few pages and it's, it already feels so much lighter. Even though like the topic is also kind of sad but it's not as heavy. I feel like it's not going to be as heavy as this book. So, wish me luck. Hi everyone, so I am back with an update. I have finished reading The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. I gave this book four stars. It wasn't quite a five star read for me. I was actually debating like 3.5 or 4. This book, it has so many like positive elements to it. But it also has one, but very, very strong element that just I wanted to be explained and it wasn't. <laughs> like, just hear me out. In this book we follow a character living in on this island. It's not said which country this is. It's not said what time, which year this is. It's just we follow one character. She lives on, on this island and there is this memory police on this island basically what happens things disappear just like random things and it's like memory police decides what things aren't necessary anymore and then they disappear and when a thing disappears everybody just forgets about them it's like they don't have any emotional connection to this thing anymore they don't understand the meaning of this thing anymore they don't know how to use it it's just it's gone it's like completely gone when things disappear most of the people forget about them but there is like a certain number of people who don't forget who still remember for some reason even they don't know Poli memory police don't know why but the memory isn't erased from their mind and so memory police collects those people and then and they take them away somewhere and no one knows what happens to them and so she our protagonist lost her mom that way and i guess the topic of the book is the importance of memory and how memories our memories make us who we are how they're important for us as humans and so with things disappearing people are kind of losing themselves as well and so i really enjoyed this this aspect of the novel also i really enjoyed like the portrayal of the situation in society it felt to me like i was reading a book about soviet union <laughs> very oppressed totalitarian society it felt like soviet union to me also i really enjoyed the relationships between characters in this book especially there are like three main characters so our main, prota main protagonist a lady she is a writer she writes novel um then second character is her editor and third character is an elderly man who was like friend of her family. She finds out that her editor doesn't forget things and she understands that he can be taken by memory police now. And so the book is about her trying to save and hide 
her editor. And so I really enjoyed the relationship between all the, all, all the characters, especially between her and the old man, so the friend of her family. It was such, such a healthy, such a wholesome friendship. I really, really liked it. It was so good. And so I really enjoyed the portrayal of this oppressed society. I really enjoyed the portrayal of all the characters and their relationships and how they are affected by losing their memories. However, one big element that I really wanted to be explained and that wasn't and that's why I feel that this book is not complete. It just doesn't feel complete to me, <laughs> like without that element being explained which is just an just the question why like you know when you read about this memory police and things are disappearing i was constantly asking myself like why like what wh why is this disappearing because disappear totally random objects like hats suddenly disappeared or perfume suddenly disappeared or birds or flowers and you're just like why? Like, just why? <laughs> what is the reason? <laughs> and the only reason that is given in this book is that those things are unnecessary. But then you just ask, like, why are they unnecessary anymore? Like, why hats are suddenly unnecessary? Like, hello, heat stroke? <laughs> or like, if it's cold winter, hats are kind of needed, especially if you're from Russia. I really did not understand, and there was no explanation in this book. And like, where does the memory police come from? Why did they appear? This whole book, like, this, the characters in the book, they feel like they're just floating in vacuum <laughs> you know like the world building in this book i feel could have been done better and it, this book would be brilliant if the world building was done better <laughs> i mean in my opinion yes we follow the characters yes we follow like all the events with them but like the question why was always on the back of my mind throughout the whole book and by the end of this book i felt so unsatisfied because i didn't understand why was it happening and yes you can say that like this is not the topic of the book the topic of the book is the importance of memory and how memory is creates who we are but this element of memory police and this element of like social and society that is being oppressed and this is being governed by this memory police this is like the key element this is why this book is possible and it wasn't explained like you have never learned by the end of the book like why memory police was created like what is happening and so it was just this debate for me like even though it, I guess it's this book isn't supposed to be like a social commentary or it's not supposed to deal with like social or political issues but at the same time it kind of started it but never finished this book felt incomplete to me like it it was such a brilliant idea and part of this book about like memory and characters it was done wonderfully but then the world building was so incomplete and that's why this book felt lacking for me to be honest because i was constantly asking myself why like why is this happening i don't know i'm still debating it's whether 3.5 or 4 because i really enjoyed like all the other aspects of it i really liked the characters and there was very beautiful the, there was a parallel between our main protagonist and the novel that she was writing and so the novel was kind of an interpretation of her life and like i guess the way like the way i saw it the relationship in the novel was kind of metaphor for her life and relationship with like the memory police and the government i don't know so it felt to me that way and i thought it was beautifully done i really enjoyed that aspect but yeah like i said world building I wanted more world building here and I want just an explanation for why is this happening. <laughs> but yeah, all in all it was a solid 4 or 3.5 star read. <laughs> I guess if world wouldn't be so important for me, I would easily give it 4 stars. 
but since it really felt lacking I think it's more like maybe 3.7 or something like that I don't know it's very hard to rate but it's still a very solid and a very important and a very interesting book and I would still highly recommend it so yeah okay so now I am going to read Teal by Daniel Kelman and again I'm very excited about this book wish me luck I hope I'm going to like it let's begin I will be back when I finish it hi everyone so I have finished Teal by Daniel Kelman and I have actually really really liked this book because first I started reading it like before this vlog and I kind of had to put it down I couldn't get into it I think I got like through maybe first 20 pages or something so I couldn't get into it and then when I was doing already this video and this vlog I started it again and I was going back into it being a little bit nervous that maybe it wasn't my cup of tea but actually I really really enjoyed it after I kind of understood where everything was going <laughs> I ended up really liking this book so in this novel we follow these two performers Teal Ullenspiegel and Nell Nell is like his friend so they travel together and we follow them throughout their lives so from their childhood to them being already adults because Teal or Teal I guess his name is Teal and because Teal is um, a performer because he's a trickster so this novel staying on brand also kind of constantly tries to trick you like you always have to be alert like while reading this book and I really really liked the aspect of the story so the I feel like the storytelling here was very unique at least I haven't encountered anything like this before so it was very interesting so in every chapter we follow a different set of characters in a different time and like in a totally different situation the only thing that kind of unites all of the chapters is that is teal that like it's at some point of his life but you never know like starting a new chapter you never know which part of his life this this is like you kind of have to figure it out it's like a riddle you have to guess a riddle like what part of his life this is and what is happening and i really really liked it it was so much fun it was really cool i enjoyed it also another different very different like unique thing that i kind of noticed is that yes teal is the main character but at the same time he kind of isn't <laughs> because in each chapter there is a different character in the center of the story each chapter tells an episode of someone else's life teal is always present but he is always somewhere on the side like he is not the center of your attention he may not he may not appear in the chapter until like the very end <laughs> even though he is the main character of the book he kind of isn't the main character of each chapter so and it was so different the main plot of teal's life becomes kind of subplot for each chapters and it was so interesting like again I have never encountered anything like this before and I liked it a lot so that was cool like the only maybe criticism that I could give is that because there are so many different characters and because they're changing all the time and because Teal isn't like at the center of your attention all the time I personally was lacking like the emotional connections to like a certain character so like I would cheer for the character I would you know be attached to the character like I didn't have that feeling for a very long time while reading this book it is not to say that the book was boring I was still very enjoying the book and I was still enjoying the narration I was still enjoying like everything that was going on but just I guess it's just my personal preference because I am I know that I am definitely a character driven reader and I need to have that like kind of emotional attachment to a character and I didn't have it here for a long time 
so I guess this would be probably my the only like criticism but apart from that this novel I feel like was actually brilliant I really really liked it so I gave it 4.5 stars out of 5 so really like this book and highly recommend it now now I am off to read the hurricane season and this is the last sixth book out of all the books shortlisted for International Women's Booker Prize 2020. So, we learned it now. Wish me luck. I will talk to you after I finish it. And then I will try to decide like which book I would give the first prize. And then we will check together if like it's actually the book that has won. <laughs> I think it's interesting. I'm very actually excited. I'm very, very curious. I have like an idea now, but I will. I still have to read this book and we will see. Okay, let's read and I will talk to you later. Hi everyone. So, I am done with this book. I'm doing everything. Um, I am just not the reader for this. I'm not the right person to read it. I don't like these types of books. It's just not for me. I cannot. I guess you can say that I just don't have the guts to read it. You you can put it wherever you want, but I just... I cannot read this. It's all I don't like about books. It's very hateful. It's very angry. It's very dark. Everybody is miserable. And there is so much cursing in this book. Like, if you want to learn curse words, in English or in Spanish. This is the book for you because there are so many of them. <laughs> like almost in every line, in every single line there would... Okay, not every single, but in so many, there's so much... There is so much cursing here. I can't. This book is just everything I don't like about books. And obviously this is just personal preferences. I'm not a literature expert. So it's just all very, very personal and I don't, I didn't like this book. Like I couldn't even push through. If for example, these, this book, which I also didn't really like, but at least in this case, I could push through. In this case, I, I don't even want to push through. <laughs> like I don't even want to, I don't know. This is just everything that I don't like. Basically, this is, I guess, just the portrayal of a small Mexican village community like their lives the story so far that I have read is that there was a witch actually like two witches like a mother and a daughter and then one day mother dies and then some years later um, the second witch is also also dies but she is killed and so this is like I guess I, I, I didn't have to, I haven't finished, but I guess it's going to be like at the part where I'm like in, in the halfway through almost. There was no investigation so far. Like there was, it's like it wasn't like a detective story to me. It was just like I don't know different characters portraying portrayal of different characters in I guess this book. I don't know. But it was just all so dark, so hateful, so miserable, so angry. Like, the way I would describe it is like, I felt like this book was just screaming at me. It was just shouting at me with like saliva flying around. And it was so angry and I was just like, oh God. <laughs> so this is just not my type of a book. I did not. It's, it doesn't want to be like, it's not supposed to be like, it's not supposed to be an enjoyable read, it's not supposed to be a book that you read with a cup of tea for your, like, you know, relaxation or something. It's not that type of a book. It's not even trying to be that book. I don't know. I guess it was just too much for me. So, yeah. I couldn't take it. It was too much. I don't like it. I DNF'd it. Okay. There you have it. I have read all six books shortlisted for International Men's Booker Prize 2020. So here are all of them. So the hurricane season, discomfort of the evenings, memory police, chill, adventures of China iron, 
and the enlightenment of the green kitchen tea. So now I'm going to try and predict the winner. Now this is the fun part. To be honest, I feel like out of all the six books, for me, like the two main contestants for like the name of the winner would be these two books. Like other books, not so much. <laughs> because this one I wanted more. This one was in, just felt inc incomplete. This one did not like it. This one did not like it even more. So the main two contestants would be these two books. But I guess like without even like thinking too much, it's for me the winner would be the Enlightenment of the Green Gage Tree by Shuku Fezar. Like hands down. I wouldn't if <laughs> somebody consulted me, if somebody asked my opinion, <laughs> um, I would I would definitely go for this book to be the winner. So because it was just my favorite out of all of them, like hands down my favorite. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Okay, so now let's see and check who which book is the actual winner. Going on my phone. So let's see. International International Man Booker Prize 2020 <laughs> oh. I wasn't checking just to make sure that I don't know the winner and just to make sure that like I make my own decision not influenced by anybody and now I learned that this is postponed. Ooh, this is such a fail. This is like the ultimate fail. So they have decided to postpone the announcement of the winner because of this the whole COVID-19 situation and to ensure that all the readers are able to get the copies of the shortlist. So the Booker Prize Foundation is keeping the situation under review and will communicate a new announcement date as soon as possible. Plans will also be unveiled to re-promote the shortlist in the lead up to the winner announcement. Okay. <laughs> So then I guess, because there is no announcement of when, well, the announcement has been postponed and I didn't know about it because I didn't want to check the website because I, I wanted to make sure that like, I make my own decision not influenced by like anybody. And so the announcement is postponed and like there is no new date when they're, go when they're going to announce the winner. So I guess you have to check for yourself. <laughs> we will not be able to check it together because I want to upload this video like this week. So that's why I will just leave it at, at this, my prediction. So my prediction for the winner would be the Enlightenment of the Green Gage Tree, my personal preference. I absolutely adore this book and I hope and I, I personally think that this book totally deserves like to win i mean all of these books are obviously brilliant and all of them deserve the attention all of them deserve readers reader, uh, readership uh but my personal fa favorite was the enlightenment of the green gauge to by shuku Feza. <sighs> this is such a bummer <laughs> i really wanted to check it with you and see like the actual result uh, but it's okay so I guess we will just wait and we will see for ourselves. You can also get some of these copies and read for yourself and then make your own predictions and then you will be able to see if your predictions coincide with the final decision of the committee. Oh, this is such a bummer, but it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's all fine. It's okay. So there you have it, guys. I have read all six books shortlisted for International Men's Booker Prize 2020 and there have been my thoughts <laughs> on all of them. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though we couldn't check the final decision together. It's okay. <laughs> you can check for yourself, I will check for myself when the final decision is announced, but yeah. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a very good day. I hope you're staying safe. And I will see you soon in my next videos. Thank you. Bye.